Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and it's time to do my 31 week pregnancy update. I feel like my pregnancy has just been flying by. I'm most definitely into my third trimester now. If there was any questions before, there's not now. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that's been going on is that Sometimes it's hard to bend over. Uh, the more I've eaten, like the later in the day it gets, and the more I've eaten throughout the day, the harder it is to bend over. Now in the morning, before I've really eaten anything, uh, I feel pretty good. I can move fairly easily. But come evening time, after I've had breakfast, lunch, and dinner, any snacks I've had throughout the day, I just feel so big, so round. Bending can be uncomfortable. Sometimes it can be almost painful to try to bend over depending on how far over I'm trying to bend. Especially if I'm sitting down and then I try to bend over to pick something off the floor. I find that to be very hard and sometimes I feel like I'm squishing my baby. Okay, so let's talk about sleep and the fact that I'm not getting enough apparently. I feel like I roll around at night. It's not until I get up in the morning to go use the bathroom because it seems um, that around somewhere between 3 and 5 in the morning, sometimes 1 or 2 in the morning, I have to get up to go to the bathroom and go pee. And then it's like, after I do that, I can go back to bed and I sleep so well. I don't know what it is about that nighttime pee, <laughs> but when I go to the bathroom um, and I come back, I can normally sleep really, really well. But before then, I feel like I am tossing and turning all night long. I can't get comfortable. Uh, I've been having a lot of back pain like this morning. My back just felt like it was on fire. It was just really hard to sleep until I go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I also feel like I get tired a lot during the day. Normally when I get up, which I seem to get up so late anymore. I don't get up until like 10 or 11 because I just, I, I sleep. We go to bed at like 9 or 10 at night and I will sleep until 10 or 11 in the morning because I just like... I'm not getting enough sleep during the night. I'm not getting enough quality sleep. And I just get so drained and exhausted by the evening time. I'm like, I'm ready to go back to bed. Come about like 8, 9, I'm like, let's go lay down. Let's chill out. Let's get ready for bed. Because I just am constantly feeling exhausted. Sorry about that. I had a phone call. I'm sure you guys heard her like start ringing. Start ringing on two separate occasions here. So I finally took the call. <laughs> so let's continue on. Next thing, um, I feel like I have to pee all the time. Like I haven't had this issue in my pregnancy up until now hitting the third trimester, but like I am going to the bathroom all the time. <laughs> Something I found that I'm starting to have problems with is breathing. And I've talked about this a little bit in a couple of my other videos, but Sometimes it gets really, really hard to breathe. I just feel like I can't catch my breath. I have to get myself propped up to be able to breathe. I feel like I'm wheezing. It's just, it's a really uncomfortable feeling. I know it's part of being pregnant. You get all this pressure on your lungs from your belly and your organs being pushed around. But it's like, sometimes it gets hard. And again, that's one of those things kind of like with the um, finding it uncomfortable to bend over, that the longer the day goes on, that the harder it gets. And I think that's just from eating and drinking and just adding you know, more things to my body that it's like more things pushing on my lungs and getting harder to breathe. The more empty my stomach is, the more comfortable I feel. So I really haven't been eating a whole lot lately and I've been trying to eat more fruits and vegetable based diets and having less heavy foods. Um, for example, this morning I had grapes and last night for dinner we had potatoes and sausage and green beans. So really just trying to eat, and like all week I've had like oatmeal for breakfast. So I'm just really trying to eat lighter foods. A lot of times I skip lunch, I might like have an apple or something. But I just, and I think it's because everything being pushed around and smushed, um, I don't feel like I can eat as much food. And when I do eat a lot of food or like a decent amount of food, I want it to be something that's going to go through my stomach quickly. I don't want it to just sit on my stomach because it just makes me so uncomfortable. I'm starting to definitely find it hard to stand for long periods of time and I also can't sit for long periods of time. I feel like, oh my gosh, I feel so lazy half the time but when I cook I have to take a dining room chair into the kitchen with me so that I have something to sit at if I'm going to be cooking for a while and I'll sit there and sit at the stove to cook. But my 
ankles just get to hurting. I haven't had any swelling on my feet, which is good, but I think just the added pressure and the weight from the baby since I have gained, as of my last doctor's appointment, 20 pounds throughout my pregnancy so far, I think just the added weight is just, it's hurting my ankles. Sometimes my knee that I messed up will hurt. Like both of my ankles, I have messed up um, when I was younger. One of them I tore all the tendons in. I can do a whole story time on that if you guys want to see it. The other one just I've sprained it a few times. And then my knee I dislocated a couple of years ago. And they just get achy and they get to hurting. And we have had some weather changes going on where it's like sunny and then it's storming or it's like you know 80 degrees and then it like drops down to 60 degrees or 50 degrees for a few days and those kind of weather changes definitely affect my joints make things that I have um, damaged in the past achy and hurt and then you couple that with an extra 20 pounds from being pregnant and from my whole body being thrown out of whack because you know you're for a woman the center of gravity um, and for balance and stuff is through the hips and the lower part and then when you get pregnant it just it changes everything and so it's a huge adjustment for your body and I'm just finding it really hard to stand for long periods of time and I'm also finding it really hard to sit for long periods of time I can no longer like go to the movies for three hours there's no way I could sit through a movie my back and my hips would just hurt so bad I went to see a show with my mom a few months ago it's the um, Celtic women were in town I went to go see them with my mom and they put on like a three or four hour show and I was just dying by the end of it and then I went to a movie with my husband um, a few weeks ago and again it was like a two hour movie something like that and it, I was just in so much pain by the end of it I was like get me out of here so I'm kind of just like telling people when they want to go to the movies and stuff I'm like I'm done I can't go I'm sorry if you want to wait until we can rent it and we can watch it here where I can get up and walk around <laughs> I think with the last episode or the episode before of Game of Thrones uh, my husband and I were watching it and I just got to hurt and I had to get up and like pace around the living room um, because I just I can't sit for long periods of time and I can't stand for long periods of time so let's go back to talking about eating <laughs> um, I have kind of been craving or wanting things that I don't typically like. There's only like two things I can think of really that I would consider a strange craving through my pregnancy, at least strange for me, and that has been Oreos and mini wheats. Prior to pregnancy, I was not a big Oreo fan. Now granted, I really like the birthday cake Oreos. Those are freaking fantastic. Don't leave those sitting around me. I will eat the whole package. But just like your regular everyday Oreos or pretty much any other Oreos, like I could take it or leave it. Like they're okay, but I'm probably not going to eat any unless it's like somebody's birthday and I don't want to be rude or something. I don't know why I said somebody's birthday, but I guess I'm thinking of elementary school and people bringing treats. But I'm just not a big fan of Oreos. But since getting pregnant and really since hitting my second trimester, and that's gone through second trimester into my third trimester, I am all about Oreos. Now I've yet to break down and buy like an actual package of Oreos because I've really tried to be conscious of what I'm eating throughout my pregnancy. I don't want to like put on a lot of excess weight, but what I'll do when I get a craving for Oreos is I'll head to Walmart and they have like these little tiny um, Nabisco tubs and they're like my Walmart. They're set up by the front by the cash register and it's like this giant like barrel and they've got all different ones. They've got Oreos and they're like these little tiny packages with little tiny mini Oreos or like dime size. They've got like Oreos, they've got um like crackers and cheese and just like all these little Nabisco treats and they come in like these little tubs. If you are a parent with kids you probably know what I'm talking about because that's what they're geared for is for children. But I will go get myself one of those tubs and sometimes it'll last me a couple of days, sometimes it'll last me a couple of minutes. But I feel a lot less guilty eating a tub of dime sized Oreos than I do feel like eating a whole package of Oreos. But I've had several of those through my pregnancy and also Oreo McFlurries. Um, never been the biggest McFlurry fan unless I can get a Reese McFlurry but I feel like in my town there's only like, I feel like it's a hit or miss the Reese's. I feel like not all McDonald's do Reese McFlurries but they all seem to do their M&M or, or Oreo and again not the biggest Oreo fan prior to pregnancy and I always found the M&M's to get like too hard and I didn't like them in ice cream so never really been the biggest fan but I have been like going to town on some Oreo McFlurries I am making up for the last 
15 plus years of my life whenever they came out with McFlurries. I don't know. <laughs> but I've been putting a hurt on some Oreo McFlurries. Um, and the other thing I mentioned was eating mini wheats. I hate mini wheats. Hate them. I also think they're like um, wheat thin crackers. I just, I'm not a fan. It's a texture thing. I feel like I'm trying to eat um, a cardboard flavored Brillo pad. No offense to anybody out there who likes mini wheats or um, wheat thins or Brillo pads, but I just think they're awful. Granted, my husband likes mini wheats and the frosted mini wheats, so we do keep frosted mini wheats on hand for him. Granted, they're the they're the Aldi's brand, so it's they're not called frosted mini wheats, but that's what they are. But the other day, and I've only had this craving once, but I literally ate pretty much the whole box of frosted mini wheats. I just couldn't control myself. I couldn't contain myself. I mean, I guess as far as like things that I could be eating, I could be eating a lot worse than a box of mini wheats. But I think I had like five bowls from about 12 in the afternoon until five when my husband got home. I just could not stop eating mini wheats. I don't know what it was. I couldn't control myself. I was having one of those days where I felt like I was just starving, which is pretty normal for pregnancy. You're gonna have some days, especially when the baby's grown, your body's grown, you just feel like you're super freaking hungry. And that was just one of those days, but the only thing that sounded good was mini wheats. And like I said, I ate the whole box. Another odd one that I found is that since getting pregnant, or at least since at least my second trimester, I can eat store-bought beef. Now this was never an issue for me growing up, but since I've been with my husband, we've been getting um, locally raised, grass-fed, hormone-free, da 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 like super healthy beef because his parents will buy a cow and have it slaughtered and then they share the beef with us. Well, I have been eating that kind of beef for the last, well, going on four years of my life and it's good, don't get me wrong, it's, it's way better for you, it's better for the environment, and those cows are treated really well, so, you know, in, in all those circumstances, it's good. But it's made it to where I can't digest regular beef. Like if we went to Walmart and bought steaks, or if we were at a restaurant and I wanted a burger or steak or something, I can't seem to digest it very well. It's just like having gravel in my stomach. I'm up all night, my stomach just feels so messed up and really uncomfortable. So I really haven't been able to eat any kind of like store-bought beef. Um, cheeseburgers from places, it's kind of like a hit or a miss. It kind of depends on how big the patty is. You know, some places you go and you get like a really thin, skinny patty and there's probably not a, real, a lot of actual beef in it. Um, I do fine with those. But if I was to get like a real like burger somewhere or steak, anything like that, like it would just tear my stomach up horribly. There is a Philly cheesesteak place here in town that my husband loves, but we haven't been able to go to. We went to it like twice when they first opened and they just like, oh my gosh, they killed me. And we haven't been there again. They've been open for like three years. And um, I just, I can't do it. But since getting pregnant, I don't seem to have a problem digesting those kind of meats anymore from other places. So that's kind of a neat, kind of taking advantage of it. We went to Texas Roadhouse a couple of times to get some steak. Definitely been eating a lot of burgers from um, Barker's BK. Granted, I've never had Barker's BK burgers without being pregnant. So those burgers are really big. We'll see how I do um, after I'm pregnant and I go back to a... Uh, well, I don't, I don't know, it's about going back to normal. I don't know what's going to happen after the baby comes. I may be able to continue to eat regular beef. Like I said, prior to ever eating the healthier beef, <laughs> I grew up on the stuff like you get in the supermarket. But like I said, for the last four years, I just haven't been able to eat it until I got pregnant. So we'll see what happens after pregnancy. But for now, I've been enjoying the beef you can get from like restaurants and stuff because I haven't been able to eat it in like four years. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some baby related things. So I've started playing music for the baby and I'll just get on YouTube and Google like pregnancy music or womb music, something like that. And normally I can find like a playlist of such, not not a YouTube type playlist, but like a video that's like a couple of hours long with a bunch of different blah, blah, with a bunch of different songs on it. And I'll just hold my phone against my stomach and Levi will kick and stuff like that. He really likes the song from 
uh, Winnie the Pooh. I think it's the 100 Acre Woods song. I could be wrong. But I found a Disney medley that just had all kinds of Disney songs. And it was, um, I believe it was all done with piano. There was like no singing. It was just the music. And he loved the Winnie the Pooh song. And he loved the Lady and the Tramp song. Uh, or at least I think he did. Either that or he absolutely hated it. But he was like kicking up a storm for both of those. The rest of them he was kind of quiet and didn't really move a lot. But he seemed to really like those. And then we've also had a couple of all-nighters with him. Which makes me nervous for when he gets here. Most of the time he is super active in the morning. Around hmm, 5 or 6 in the morning when Mike gets up. Until um, somewhere between... 9 and 11, sometimes noon, depending on when he started moving and being active. Occasionally, I'll get movement during the middle of the day. Not always. That's just like a hit or a miss. And then, excuse me, burps. I'm still burping all the time. Like, I think that's just part of pregnancy, but I just, I get the burps. But <laughs> then he'll get active again in the evening time around 7 or 8 and he'll go until like 11 or 12 o'clock or something like that and then he's like quiet all night and I don't feel any movement. But we have had two all-nighters where it's like one of them was really bad and I was I wanted to sleep so bad but he was moving so much I couldn't and he was going from about 1 or 2 in the morning until like five or six in the morning oh my goodness I could not sleep he was just like going 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 like would not stop and I'm like oh my god um the other one wasn't so bad it was only for a couple of hours but he was going like really hard and it was like right in the middle of the night like maybe from one to three or something like that it wasn't super long but it was so much movement so much movement that it woke me up and I couldn't sleep so on to some other things that's a little more personal. Um, my husband and I have started doing what's called a premium massage. Essentially it's massaging the tissue that is between your, okay this is going to get super graphic and detailed so if you're not into that kind of stuff, sorry, <laughs> but if you're watching this there's a good chance you're pregnant. Or you just like my channel and keeping up with things. I don't know. Just giving a heads up. This is going to get kind of graphic. But a premium massage is massaging the tissue that is between your um, vaginal opening and your butthole, essentially. Which, when you give birth, if you rip or tear or they have to cut you, that's where they cut you. So I did a little bit of research on a premium massage. Apparently, it can be really helpful for women who have either never had a baby or if you've had a baby and you've never torn or ripped or been cut, um, this can be really beneficial for you. It said that if you have torn in the past from past, past pregnancies, that it's likely not going to do much for you. You already have that scar tissue there that's weaker and you're more likely to tear again regardless of if you do this massage or not. But it says to start doing it around... Um, 34 weeks until the baby comes we started doing it last week a few times a few times a week and uh, there's different um oils you can use just to help like soften the tissue there's i think it's a prime rose or something i would just suggest doing your own research they also just recommend the same kind of um oil essential oils i don't remember what they're called because we're not using those but i found on a couple of different sites where it suggested just using ky lube so that's what we're doing but um, essentially, you or your partner just take your thumbs and massage that area and that skin with the lube to help give it a lot of moisture and help prepare the skin for stretching. And hopefully that'll help when I deliver. Sorry, that was all way too much information, but I want to document my pregnancy, what's going on, what we're doing, what we're trying, um, just for my own future record references. And if this helps anybody else, you know, if you're a first time mom and you're pregnant or if you're going on your second kid and you didn't rip or tear the last time, you might want to try this out. It might work for you. I don't know if it's going to work for me or not, but I figure it's worth a go. It's not going to hurt anything to try, right? So <laughs> we'll see what happens. But that kind of wraps up everything for my 31 week pregnancy update. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Um, I'll go ahead and do a belly shot really quick before I sign off. So this is what my belly is looking like at 31 weeks. That's what we got going on. Um, so far today I've only eaten some grapes. 
So that's a pretty true looking belly. The more I eat throughout the day, the bigger my belly starts to look. But that's me without really eating anything. So and it's definitely true to size, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so there's my belly. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It definitely helps people find my videos. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. It'll notify you anytime that I make a new video. If you choose that option, or even if you just subscribe, then I'll just be in your subscriptions, and then you'll just see when I make a new video. But otherwise, I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.